Jamie Sheffield. And I'm Jim Hawley. And this is America's Off-Road Biker. Today on America's Off-Road Biker, our host, Jim Hawley, is going to teach us everything we need to know about off-road handlebars. We'll meet Jim's dad, veteran racing team master mechanic, Al Hawley, and visit seven-time Supercross champion, Jeremy McGrath. Jim will take us off-road for his special feature, the dirt bike tip of the day. So don't go away. When we asked Reebok to send us Terry Tate, some people thought we were crazy. But I'm a firm believer in paradigm breaking, outside the box thinking. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Break was over 15 minutes ago, Mitch! And since Terry's been with us, our productivity has gone up 46%. <laughs> We're getting more from our employees than ever before. You know you need a cover sheet on your TPS reports, Richard! That ain't new, baby! Hey, Terry. Hey, Janice! My but what's really impressed me is how Terry's become part of the Felcher family. He fits right in here. That's a low distance call, Doug! To be honest, I wish Reebok sent us 10 Terry Tates. You wanna play game sheen? Well, when it's game time, it's pay time, baby! Woo! Everything okay? I'm sorry, I'm just a little freaked out right now. What? I don't understand why anyone would want a third arm. Oh, baby, it's the best thing I've ever done. For one thing, I never had to put down my Bud Light. And when it's my turn to buy around, I can carry like nine beers. <laughs> oh, let me get that for you, baby. Waiter. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. You get used to it, baby. Make it a Bud Light. Need some advice here. This bike belongs to a friend of mine. He's had it for about a year or so, and he's ready to spruce it up. Well, Tammy, after a year, um, the first thing I'd probably do is get rid of the steel OEM handlebars. I mean, they've been on the bike for about a year now, and it's a safety feature more than mm -hmm. anything else to get rid of those because of the fact that we're going to put on a brand new set of aluminum handlebars, and aluminum has a tendency to dissipate the vibration a little bit, so your mm -hmm. hands don't get as tired when you're out there riding. And, um, you know, they make a lot of different variety and sizes of handlebars. Uh, the best thing to do is go into your local dealer, figure out which size you want, how long you want them, the rise, the sweep, the, it's how far they pull back, and everybody's different. Now, if you like the OEM style of the handlebar, they also make the OEM style. In aluminum, though. In aluminum, exactly. No, wait a minute. If I heard you correctly, the ones that come with a bike aren't the best handlebars. Well, a lot of people ask me that question, and it's just a, it's a, it's a money issue. Um, oh. It's a lot cheaper for the factories to bring the bikes over with steel handlebars mm -hmm. than aluminum. Now, what about these? What can we do with these? These look a little tattered and roughed up. Well, the, the tatterness, actually, they're doing their job. These are okay. what you call hand guards, and what it is exactly is that is if you hit any bushes or trees or anything, it kind of is a little bit of a break there so your fingers and hands don't come in contact with the bushes or the trees, for that matter. But uh, they look a little bit beat up. We could put a new set on there for them. What about the grips? You know, there again, uh, go to your local dealer. Any of them have all types of different grips. I mean, with different compounds. They have some with mm -hmm. softer compound, medium, and also some that are kind of rock hard rubber grips. And there again, also, they have different uh, ribbing because some people like different feel grips. They come in different colors too some clear, some gray. So, you know, if you want to change the look of your bike, you want a set of gray grips on here, slap them on there. So it's really a personal feel on the grips. There's not one that that this grip is better for this, or this grip is better for that. It's really all personal Yeah, like we like to say, then. it's just uh, <laughs> rider preference. Okay, what else, what else can we do to spruce this guy up? Well, you know, the thing that most people forget about is their clutch purchase here. And if you notice, this one here, we can't really move. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and everybody, they all come in this same type of thing. They always want to tighten it down too much. I okay. recommend just backing it off just ever so slightly, enough where it's still there, but if you hit the ground, it falls down and you don't bust that lever off because you don't want to be up in the hills. You bust off the lever. Now how are you going to get back to your You're truck? You're in trouble. Exactly. Some serious trouble. Exactly. 
But that's it. You just, you know, you get your good feel for where you want it. I always like to keep my levers where my forearm and my hand are all straight in one line. A lot mm -hmm. of people, sometimes you'll see them with their levers down here. But for me, if your hand's rotated up like this and you hit something, your wrist is bent, mm -hmm. boom, it's easy to snap it. Also, if you bring it up too high, I've seen some guys where their, you know, levers are way up high and their wrists are kind of bent like this. I, there again, my rider preference, I like to keep everything in a nice straight line. So if you hit something in your jar, you're in a nice straight line. Same thing with your kill button here. I notice it's a little bit down. If you ever get in trouble and the throttle sticks and you crash, yeah. you want to be able to shut the motorcycle off. Right. This kill button, I like to kind of, and it's really loose here, as you can see. Okay. <laughs> you didn't even tighten it up, but uh, you just got to push that there and that's it. Mm -hmm. The handlebar mounts, the top mounts here, there's a right way and a wrong way to put those on. Okay. There's, there's a front to them and there's a back. And, and you'll see it when you take off the top bolt here that there's a little dot. And that dot has always got to be pointing frontwards. And when you also, when you put your new handlebars on, mm -hmm. you want to cinch these down nice and tight and then tighten up the back ones. Well, now changing the handlebars, can, uh, how do you say, quote unquote, a normal person do this or should they take it to a shop? To get uh, them changed. It's easy enough to do you know? it. Okay. You could even do it. I could do it. You could well, do it. I'll I don't teach know about you how that, to do but it. But okay. <laughs> the front brake lever, you want to have a little bit tighter, and if you notice, the OEM levers are a lot shorter. Therefore, if the bike falls on the right hand side, because you have a lot of weight up here with this master cylinder, mm -hmm. and if you have it loose, it'll have a tendency when you're riding just from the vibration to go down on its own. Just because this is a little bit heavier here, right. it holds a lot of fluid for the front disc brake. And so that one there, you want to make sure that it's pretty snug down there. And that's why the OEM factories have shorter levers than on the clutch side. Now what's the little tool there you've been using? Well, these are uh, called T-handles and they're really handy. I mean, they okay. make them in eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter. They're just really nice tools to have around. I mean, <laughs> normally you just kind of Put them in the foot peg here and just they'll, okay. they'll be there and then you can just, you know, if you need it, boom, you don't have so to go back So this is a biker's handy tool that he pretty much needs to keep with yep, him at all times? at all times. This is it. I mean, okay. And not only that, if you have a wrench, it's a lot more to get the leverage with a longer tool oh, okay. like this here. What about the cables? What can we do with them? Well, for that, uh, let's go to the guy that uh, kept all my bikes in winning condition, my dad, Al Holly. Now when we come back, we're going to Al's shop where Al's going to show us how to maintain our cables. And later on America's Off-Road Biker, we're going to visit Jeremy McGrath to get his input on off-road suspension. So don't go away. Kevin, I want you to move to Philadelphia and learn everything about making an authentic Philly cheesesteak. I'll do my best, sir. Kevin. Yo, Jackie! How's it hanging, bro? I soaked that Philly like a sponge. My new Philly cheesesteak is the real deal. Marinated sliced steak smothered with grilled onions and melting cheese on a hearth-baked steak roll. It's really authentic. How you doing? Uh, maybe a little too authentic. And let's breathe and release right into cobra position. Continue to relax and release that negative energy. Inhale, arch. Thrust your pelvis to the sky and exhale, release into the stretch. Good. Focus, focus, focus. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. We do the hips to the sky thing again? Yeah, that was great. Make it a Bud Light. She's not very relaxed. service your cable, it's not that difficult to do. The first thing you want to do is disconnect your cables. Remove your clutch, then your throttle, and open your side case. Join the top of your clutch cable and easy lube cable tool. Then push your cable down to keep any access from coming out of the top. Then you need a rag to cover up the bottom because sometimes you will get overspray out of the bottom. Mount your sprayable cable lube to your small hole and dispense. You'll also want to spray your throttle disc with contact cleaner. With cable lube, repeat what you did with the clutch cable to your throttle cable. 
You want to clean any excess lubricant off of this area and around your ignition simply by just spraying a good contact cleaner like PJ1 around here. And finally, all you need to do is reassemble your cables and cover and adjust to factory specs. Jim and Tammy, I hope I've been helpful. And I'm always here at the shop. If you need anything, give me a call, okay? Okay, so we got it on a stand. Now we can check it out. Yep, and you know, just a, a quick overhaul of this thing. I, I, you need a set of handlebars right away. You need a set of grips. You need a front brake lever. This front brake lever is broke. Got to get rid of this fender, uh -huh. and we have to align this front wheel back up straight because if you're going down the off-road riding, the wheel is going to be pointing off to the left, and you're trying Which is to go not straight. Good. No, okay. not, not good at all. We got our work cut out first? for us. Let's do the grips. We got to get okay. rid of the grips Doing right the away. Grips. First things first, we just kind of slide these things right off. Ah, there we There's go. There's one. This one we'll try the contact cleaner and see. Why don't you hold that for me for sure. a sec? You know, it's interesting, contact cleaner though, uh, sometimes you squirt it into these rubber products and it just eats it right off the handlebar. Need it there? A little yeah, squirt there? Yeah, squirt that right in inside there. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> All right. There it is. Take off these bars and get rid of these bars. So they're totally trashed. We need to just replace Trash. them. Trash. Remember we talked about the safety earlier in the show about, you know, people torquing down on their clutch perches and they mm -hmm. don't even move. Well, when we go to install this back, we'll just cinch it down real nice. There's the clutch perch. That's off. Loosen up the throttle. Once we got that nice and loose, and we're going to take off the bars now with that 12 okay. millimeter. I always like to turn the bars this way because it's mm -hmm. got an automatic stop. And I'll show you. It's kind of interesting uh, when they make these things. Mm -hmm. But if you can take a look at it. See how that side's taller than that? Yeah, of course. Well, the OEM people, they put a little dot there. And that always knows that that's the that's part that to go goes front. to the front. Correct. All right. <laughs> okay, now we're ready for to get rid of these steel handlebars. And there again, the throttle just kind of slides off like this. And the front perch slides off like that. Okay. Now these were the steel ones. Correct. And these are the, are the aluminum ones. You see the weight difference oh, also? Big difference. Yeah. So big difference. And if you crash, wow. they might not pretzel as much as the steel right. ones. That's why we go with the aluminum ones. Okay. That's all slid in there nice. Mm -hmm. Take off the crossbar because this is more. very important. Yeah. You need the room, but it's very important to have the crossbar on because if you have a crash, mm -hmm. And you don't have that on there, you have a tendency to lose your teeth every <laughs> once in a while. Dot's in the front. The dot is in the front. Right. There we go. Okay. That one slides on there. You'd be surprised on how many uh, people out there, you know, don't put that dot in the front. It's very yeah. important, especially when you're doing jumps. But would the handlebars be adjusted differently if it was me riding it or you riding oh, it? Oh, sure. That's just rider okay. preference. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Some guys like it's to have. It's not a up. certain. No. Okay. You want to really make sure you torque down on the fronts, and then you can come back, and that's when you do the backs. Okay. But this one just sits up there like that, and uh, just take your fingers there and. It's hard. <laughs> okay, we'll tighten up the front brake perch, and there again, like we talked about with this reservoir, you want you can go ahead and cinch this one down. Okay, so it's pretty tight, so it doesn't vibrate down. That's about right okay. there as far as the wrist positioning. Check. I don't know if yeah, this one looks good. I like to always bring this lever to the end of the handlebar like that because a lot of times if you have it over, mm -hmm. it has a tendency when the bike falls over to bust that end up. Oh, okay. So as long as you so put line it, it right yeah, up. as long as you kind of line it up there, then go ahead and tighten it up. Okay. We'll make sure that it, it has a tendency to move. But see, so if you fall, right, it'll move, but it, it won't break that it. lever. Right. Okay. So the bars are tight. Let's do a little checklist. We got all four handlebar mounts tight. We got mm -hmm. the front brake. Tight. We got the 
throttle housing tight and we got the clutch lever perched tight, right? Okay. Well, now I have the grips. Okay. But uh, there's one little thing. Um, What's you up? know, we're doing the show. Mm -hmm. You have some hairspray on you, don't you, by any chance? You know what? I yeah. actually do have some hairspray with me. I knew you would have hairspray. <laughs> if we don't have grip glue, the next best thing is hairspray. It's hairspray. It's okay. like a lacquer. It's uh, a lubricant that will slide on, but yet mm -hmm. it will dry. And another interesting thing, too, is um, there's two different sides of grips. There's a left and okay. a right. The uh, bigger hole is for the throttle side, the which bigger? is the right-hand side. Smaller. Smaller side. Goes on okay. the clutch. And what you do with this is... Um, Gonna slip on this thing. This came off when we cut off the other grips. That's a little piece, so you don't slide the throttle grip up too close, and okay. it'll have a tendency to stick. But just um, you know, squirt a few squirts in there. Okay. Wow. Whoa! Some power there. It there. just uh, slides right on like that, just as easy as that. Oh wow! There it is. That's it. There you go, and just slide it right on the handlebar. Okay. We're ready to go. Yeah, just slide it. Right. Lift some oomph in there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's okay. it. It's on the end of the bar. You did great. Cool. Next thing, um, front fender. I gotta take off this front fender. Okay. And we're saying goodbye to that too. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> it's one of those things. I got four bolts there. Also, okay. there's one other little bolt right here that holds the brake cable on. That was pretty loose. It's another thing the guy didn't have tied on this thing. Okay. But there it is. We're gonna put on a new fender. No scratches. I was nice, gonna say, it looks neat. all looks nice, cool, brand huh? new. Brand Hopefully, new. it will stay like that, huh? <laughs> yeah, if he gets his suspension right and he goes and talks to Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy will dial him in. That's there sure. you go. Okay, one more to go. So anyhow, we got that all tight. We got okay. the brake cable guide tight. Okay. Now I forgot the um, crossbar pin. There we go. Go ahead and slip that on there. Because we want your friend to keep his two front <laughs> teeth, huh? Right. Okay, so we'll put this back on. Now, there's a way, a proper way of putting this on. You see how the slit is here? Mm -hmm. Most people always put it on, and if they hit, they go right down like that, and you see the bar right there? Right. Boom, that's into your teeth. So what I like to do is when you're putting this on, the Velcro that holds this thing all together, Right. I like to rotate this slit where, right to the Velcro, oh, put it on okay. like that, then I turn the Velcro down Another so I know trick. that it's on the bottom. Right. That way if my face hits this. It's not going to go in the crevice Correct. and where you're going to hit the bar. Look down at the bike now. You'll, you'll see how the front wheel is off. It's not lined up perfectly with right. the fender. We know Fender's we have a, going this way, wheel's going this way. Exactly. And we know we have a new fender on it. That's straight. Mm -hmm. We know the handlebars are straight. So the only other thing it can be is the front wheel is kind of out of whack. So okay. best thing to do that is you take your 12 millimeter and you just kind of loosen up your triple clamps. These are what hold the forks together. You have to look in your manual mm -hmm. to get the uh, specifications, but it's probably about 12 foot-pounds as far as the torque. Let me tighten this back up. Now that we have all the triple clamps loosened up, I like to come over here and just grip it with my knees and mm -hmm. tweak it back into shape. How's that look Get it to all you? straight in the line. It's nice yep. and straight. Looks good okay. to me. The only thing we got left to do is just torque down the uh, triple clamps. Okay. Use a torque wrench for this. Remember Marco? He had that thing. It was so hard right. for me to get it off. <laughs> Set it at about 12 foot pounds and just kind of go by until you hear it click mm -hmm. right there. That's that's as tight as you Tells, need. Okay. That's it. You hear that little click yep. right there? That's tight. Come up to the front. Click there. Click there. We'll do the other thing over here on this side. You hear that? Yep. that that's telling you that you know you got enough torque on the bolt. It's perfect. How's it feel? Good. Feels good. So when we come back, we're going to visit Jeremy McGrath, where he's going to tell us what the deal is about bike suspension. So stay tuned. Somewhere a trucking company needs a driver. Somewhere a driver needs a job. That's where we come in. Blue collar, white collar, no collar. Now Monster works for everybody. Are you Brad? I'm Alex. No, I'm not Brad. Line date. Sorry, Alex. Hey. 
We must be Brian. Oh, yeah. I'm Alex. New Smirnoff Ice Triple Black. Premium all beverage. So, what is your name? CTS. Breakthrough. guys, today we're at McGrath Racing and I'm going to see if I can give you a few helpful tips on your suspension. There's three basic things you need to think about. Your compression, your rebound, and your spring rate. Depending on what weight rider you are, 200 plus I'd say you need to change your spring rate, make a little bit stiffer spring. If you're 150 or less, you need to get a little bit lighter spring. Some of the things you can do at the track is adjust your compression right here with a flat blade screwdriver. Really easy. You can make a little change, go out and ride, test it. What the compression does is make it stiffer or softer. You also have a rebound adjustment that's down here on the lower end of the shock, which allows the shock to move faster or slower, depending on what kind of bumps you're in. You can also change your spring rate in your fork for obviously a heavier guy or a lighter guy. If you have any trouble, it's easy to refer to your service manual or go down to the local dealer where you bought your bike. I'm sure they'd be glad to help you. Well, that's it. Thanks a lot, Tammy, for having me on the show, and I think we're gonna go to Jim right now with the tip of the week. What I like to do on a figure eight is to start out nice and slow. First gear, and just set up where you got a nice tight right hander, put your leg out, make a little bit of a straightaway, put your left leg out. What this is doing is giving you a chance to work with the bike and feel the bike as it leans over. Here's another right hander. If it leans over too much, that's okay. Coming into the left hander now. And there again, it's just a Learn what the bike's going to do when you go into right hand turns and left hand turns. You just work up the ladder. See if you notice I'm really going good now. I'm using heavy braking as I'm going into these corners. A lot of body English coming out. Way up on the front of the tank. As you can see, when I enter into the turn, I'm up on the front of the tank, putting the foot out, pivoting around it. For the advance, guys, is now we're going to get into shifting. We're going to come out of the corner, shift into second gear, make it a little bit wider, shift into second, downshift. Now all I'm doing is I'm opening up this figure eight. This is what we call pivoting. You're trusting your right foot, you're planting it, you're leaning the bike over, you're rolling the throttle on a little bit, letting the clutch out, just letting it come right around with you. Don't be afraid. If the bike starts to come out of the corner, that means you gotta put a little bit more weight down on your leg. Put the weight down, just make the turn like that. Come to the right hand turn, I don't want to go that way. And go have some fun. Dave, there's so much stuff here, too much to decide. What do we need to get out there riding? Well, there is a lot on off-road apparel, and it takes time to get to know and to try on the stuff that is correct for you. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we like to start with is the helmet, the, helmet. the number one piece of equipment. Okay. They're, they come in many different sizes. 
This is just an off-road, Fox off-road full face helmet. Okay. They make these also in children's sizes. But the fit is the most important thing. It mm -hmm. wants to fit you correctly. Spend some time, make sure that you get a helmet that fits you properly. Okay. And from there, off-road boots. Okay. A, a work boot at bare minimum. But okay, off-road so no boots. sneakers or anything no like sneakers. that. You, you have to wear one of the boots. You have to wear boots and preferably off-road boots. Okay. And now, brand new is a women's pant that okay. has a completely different cut. It's cut okay. a little larger in the hips, a little different inseam, uh -huh. and it's it's just made for a woman. Made for a woman. Now, what about chest protectors? We see Off everybody roadway. wearing them now. Okay. It, it's more that do wear them than do right. not wear them. So for safety. This is utmost important. Absolutely. Again, okay. there are the helmet is the number one piece number of one. equipment. But okay, but all everything together makes the makes the whole outfit complete correct. and full safety. Okay. What about so we have stuff for women, we have stuff for adults. What about little guys? Well, is there stuff for the real tidy? You can get some really little stuff. Oh wow! I'm not 100 percent sure <laughs> that the kids are out there racing that are this small. So you can pretty much fit the whole family then here. You can fit kids from very young to very old. <laughs> okay. The next chapter is here. SR3 New Blood from Clutch Films. Featuring the outrageous styles of Jeremy McGrath, Dustin Miller, Mike Metzger, Brian Foster, Slick Rick and others. Tearing it up to music by Marilyn Manson, Hard Knocks, The Crystal Method, Static X, System of a Down, Hotwire, and more. SR3 New Blood, the sickest adventure yet. Catch it on DVD or VHS for only $24.95 at your participating dealer or online at www.clutchfilms.com. Tammy, you missed it. I had a great ride, but you know what? We're out of time. What do we have for next week? You know, next week is going to be another great show. Al's going to be back with us, and he's going to tell us the ins and outs of braking systems. We'll also be gearing up Jim's bike for more off-road racing. Plus, we'll visit three-time world champion rider Ricky Carmichael. So join us next week on America's Off-Road Bikers.